Me and you, not the same I'm moving different, I'm in my own lane Being the greatest is part of the game You think it's a joke, but I'm really not playing I'm out in no competition when you niggas Y'all know the vibes, it's your man Ricochet from Flow 93.5 We're chopping it up with my guy Fame Holiday today We're gonna get to know him a little bit Talk about his project And just put you on to everything Fame Holiday Alright man, it's good to finally sit down with you and chop it up It's been a hot minute Long overdue man. Yeah, Long yeah, overdue. we we been should have did this For real, for real But we're doing this at the right time Because um, your project Showtime is out right now mm -hmm. No better time to uh, get into it Let's Let's start at the beginning, man. For people who don't know about Fame Holiday, uh, why don't you let them know who Fame Holiday is? That's a good question. Um, who is Fame Holiday? Okay. I would say Fame Holiday is a young dude, mm -hmm. um, very big imagination, mm -hmm. very passionate about music, and just inspiring other people to chase their dreams. Right. Yeah. And um, what gives you that, that inspiration to want to... You know, to let other people want to chase their dreams, because usually we don't really hear that. That that was a pretty dope answer, because you said that and it kind of kind of caught my attention. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I would say like just like being in situations where I'm forced to like grind it out, like working certain jobs in the past that I didn't want to work. Right. Um, being surrounded by older people, people my age, and they're just like. There's a lot of complaining, and uh -huh. like I'm not happy. Like I wish back then in my time, like I did different things so I could have followed my dreams. Right. Um. So being in those spaces, but not like staying in those spaces. Right. I'm like, yo, I really gotta like nail that on the head when I get in position and I have a bigger platform. Right. I wanna let people know, like, yo, you don't wanna have those regrets in the past. Right. You know right. I mean? Right. So, well, salute to you for that one. Um. Well, take us back a little bit. How uh, How did you first get into music, and when did this all start for you? Yeah. Uh. Man, music. It's been a big passion for a long time. I think I was about six years old when I got introduced to the 50 Cent Massacre album. Is that what it was? It was yeah, it was 50? yeah. Absolutely. Uh, 50 Cent is that guy, you know? I really uh -huh. wanted to be First of all, let man. me say this. At six years old, you probably shouldn't have been listening to 50 Cent Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> but neither here nor there. I didn't even own it. I was stealing it from like my cousin. Right, and stuff, right. Okay. Yeah. So that was the inspiration. Yeah, yeah. And then when did the journey begin for you? Um, I would say about grade nine. That's when I started to like really start putting out music and um, writing. Right. Um, so I was the type of kid that I was very quiet. I didn't uh -huh. like to really talk to people about my feelings or stuff like that. So I just put it into the music. And that was like my way of venting and, you know. Right. So the music became an outlet for you to express yourself, basically. 100%. Dope. Um, the name Fame Holiday. Talk to me. Where did, where did that come from? It's funny you say that. So um, I remember when I was 14, my, my rap name was Young Fame. Okay. And uh, at the time, there was like, you know, Facebook was like, Facebook is big right now, obviously. Right. But right. it was like super popping in my high school days. Right. Um, but there was a group called um, Team Holiday, and uh -huh. they were like pretty boys, but they were super popping. Like they had all the girls, you know what I'm saying? And they had came across one of my records, and they're like, "Yo, Fame, like we want you to be a part of our group, but the thing about us is like you have to have Holiday in your name." Right. So I was like, "All right, cool." They're like, "Yeah, change your Facebook name to like Young Fame, Fame Holiday. I don't know, but if you want to stick to Fame, like just put Holiday somewhere." Right. So I was like, "All right, cool. I'll do that." Um, as soon as I did that, they shouted me out, and man, like my my followers and everything went That's crazy. It. I started going to the mall, and it was no longer Young Fame. It was like, yo, you're that Fame Holiday guy on Facebook. Like, I like your music. You know, you're really good and stuff like that. So I kind of just stuck with it as the years went on. Um, but obviously, like, that group is no longer there or whatever. But it just resonated with me. You know what I mean? You know, um, you, know you, you just mentioned something about kind of like Facebook really playing an important role in that time mm -hmm. uh, during your life and your career. Uh, explain to me how that propelled your career a little bit and put you on, like, gave you some notoriety. Yeah, absolutely. Like, what were you doing on Facebook them times? I'm not even going to lie. Like, I was super young and, like, active. Uh -huh. um, so I was the type of person to, like, be in your messages and, like, spamming right. you, like, yo, you check out this new record, like, how you guys feel about this. Taking the feedback in, like, actually going through all the conversations and right. um, just taking that as, like, criticism and going back in the studio and trying to do better, you know what I mean? Now, let's talk about criticism because, you know, initially when you first start rapping, I'm, I'm not particularly saying you or anybody, usually in, a, in an artist's career in the early stages, there's a lot of development happening. Absolutely. And uh, sometimes taking that criticism, especially when it comes online, especially if you're reading the comments and you're going through and not all the comments are going to be positive. For sure, for sure. How, how do you take that in and how do you deal with that? How do you deal with some of the hate and some of the trolling? I know there's a lot of positive, uh, a lot of positive um, vibes surrounding you, period, mm -hmm. but... Mm -hmm. You know, there's always that one dude somewhere. How do, you, how do you deal with that? I think at the in the beginning, it was very tough to see the comments. Like right. I was just in high school, like really just a young dude just trying to figure it out. Right. But I would have people talk about, I'm gonna pull up to your school and this, that, and the third, like right, reckless right, stuff. Right, right, right. But I never really encountered that energy in person. Right. Um. So I think just seeing so much love in person and the impact that I have on people. Right. Really like 
took those comments away. But it was right. very difficult in the beginning for like sure. Like the keyboard gangsters never really bring yeah. it to reality. And you don't know yeah. that as a kid, so it's like. But the love is a reality. The 100%. love does come. Hundred percent. So your project's called Showtime, right? Mm-hmm. Um, first and foremost, how did you come up with the name for the uh, project? So the way I came up with the name basically is just like Showtime to me represents like being ready for mm-hmm. that moment. You know what I'm saying? And with any show, if you ever put one together or you had one, you know it takes preparation like rehearsals. You got to make sure you have enough fans to sell out a venue. Um, so it's a lot of key things. You got to make sure your sound is right. Uh, you know what you're doing. So Showtime just represents like being ready for that moment and like taking it outside of like just your hometown and like really ready to tap into the world, take it international. Right. Now, how does this project differ from some of your other projects in the past? Yeah, I would say um, how versatile it is. You know what I mean? Right. I really got into different bags and tapped into different markets. And with even the singles I put out, a lot of them were different from each other, um, but they reached different places. And a lot of those um, places that they tapped into, like they really rock with it. So I was like, Showtime is versatile. It's international. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's not just one sound. Right. Yeah. You know, when I hear the name Showtime, I think what comes to mind is that you're ready for the show. You're ready for the big lights, the big stage. Um, we met uh, through the internet and through the music business, I think, three, four years ago. Yeah. And um, I've been lucky enough to see the progression of your music and where it's where it's came from and where it's going. Absolutely. How do you describe that journey? Uh, man, like a lot of studio late nights, you know, a lot of sessions, but... I know, like, COVID and stuff has been a very tough time for a lot of people, but I would Mm -hmm. say, like, I'm very thankful for the extra time that it gave me. Like, in that process, I quit my job. Like, a lot of things happened where I was just forced to, like, really lock into the music. Right. Um, And it really allowed me to figure myself out and just tap in, really, like, make things better. Like, take that extra time. Now, what was the moment you just said you quit your job? Yeah, yeah. For a lot of artists, that's a scary transition Mm -hmm. um, to go from what what you consider a solid check, money coming in, stability... To leave that behind to chase your dreams, what was the what was that turning point that made you realize that this is you got to go all in right now? I think it was just like the focus, you know. Um, I remember before I quit my job, there was a lot of times where like, I used to work at the mall, Foot Locker. Right. Um, so there was a lot of times where the mall would shut down for a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two because mm-hmm. of the pandemic, right? And then reopen, right? So all that extra time I had when I was locking in with the music, I was just, and like strategizing, like really marketing myself a little bit different. I was like, man, like this is all the time I never had before. And I was all just ba- trying to balance it all, figure it out. But, mm-hmm. um, I just loved that extra time I had. And I was very active on social media. Mm-hmm. I was doing like live concerts and stuff and people were paying me like actually paying to see me live on my Instagram and stuff. So right. I was like, man, it's going to be a process to figure it out. But, I got to do what I got to do, you know. I, like, working at Foot Locker, you can imagine, like, being, like, a local artist. People know where you work. Right. They pull up on you. They want pictures right. randomly. Right. They start having maybe uncomfortable conversations where it's, like, you can't really say no because you're working, right. you know, working right. space. So my manager, like, kind of getting pissed off about that and saying, like, yo, you can't take pictures with your fans every day. Like, right. that's not cool. Like, you're on your job. You, like, right. tell them to go. Right. And I'm a very humble dude. I'm not going to tell my fans to leave the store, especially right. when they're showing me love. So I just kind of had to, like, separate that work situation and really like go full time with the music. Right. Well, you talked about the pandemic and COVID as an artist in this day and age, it's real important to be in front of your fans, to be on a stage, to be out and about, to be traveling to different cities. How has, um, COVID the restrictions, the lockdowns, how has that affected the journey to this point? If it did at all? Yeah. Um, I mean, I did do some traveling, um, like this year, like 2021. Mm -hmm. Um, 2020 was like a write-off right and it was crazy because just before the pandemic i had dropped my last project temporary love so it kind of forced me in a space to like how do i connect with the people um and i think like doing little challenges for certain records and stuff like that really allowed me to expand and engage but it was very tough like just trying to navigate like yo what's my next move i want to have a concert like in real life right i'm doing all these like virtual concerts like it's cool, but it's not like really fun. Like I right. like I like the audience. I like to you touch people. Energy, and, yeah, absolutely. And I feel like when you're doing virtual shows, you don't really get that aspect of it. You know, right? Um, you know, the pandemic has taken a toll on a lot of things. And and for some artists that I've spoken to in the past, it's it's affected their creative process, their their motivation throughout this whole uh, last couple of years. What's kept you motivated? What's what's kept you hungry? I think um, I've been very grateful to like have invested in my own studio craft at home mm-hmm. uh, so i actually record a lot of my own music mm-hmm. um and just being able to do that was a blessing to like just vent and like 
try different things. Um, but what keeps me motivated is just like wanting more from not only myself but my family. You know what I mean? Right. Like everybody's struggling right now. Not just artists, but like everybody. Period. And um, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not okay with that. So right. I gotta go hard. Who else will? Right. You know, earlier in the conversation, you talked about Fifty being an inspiration. When I listen to your music, I hear all kinds of different vibes. Mm-hmm. Like, you can make a record about unity and, 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 and some positive, you know, positive stuff. You can make a music about getting it popping in the club. You can make, you know, a, a record for the gal them. So talk to me about uh, some of your other musical inspirations. Yeah, I mean, I got to give credit to 50 still. Like, he's a mogul now compared to, like, when I was first, right. first taking him, uh, his music and whatnot. Um, and that's where I'm trying to take it at the end of the day. So shout out to 50. But... Uh, influences right now, I would say definitely um, people like Big Sean. Okay. Um, I think within his music, like he, his main focus is one of his main focuses is really to inspire other people. So I really connect with that and resonate. Right. Um, who else do I really rock with right now? Um, someone like Nipsey Hussle, kind of mm-hmm. like doing it the independent route and just mm-hmm. you know taking in your community mm-hmm. and putting them under you and really like giving other people opportunities. I think that's important. You know, being an artist from Toronto. Um, yeah. From time to time, if you're just viewing Toronto from the uh, viewpoint of Instagram, yeah, um, a lot of people think Toronto is very one-dimensional as far as the rap scene goes, mm-hmm. right? A lot of people think it's real street music. It's all about smoking on your op, um, this, that, and the third. And your music seems to bypass all of that. How important is it to show the other side of Toronto? Um it's not even just Toronto, it's like Canada, period, right. you know what I mean? Right. Um, I think it's it's very important, and it's not an easy task to do, right. because obviously, like, the politics and certain street records and stuff get more of the coverage. Right. Um, like, there's certain platforms that I haven't even be, been posted on right. before, and I wish it was different, um, but I gotta, like, just fight through that wall, you know? Right, Cause because I know it seems like it's what it's the drama. 100%. It, it, it's the beef that sells, right? We're in the... You know the post Takashi Six Nine era where he kind of changed the game. Yeah, yeah. But I still see you thriving, and I still see you, you know, moving forward without doing any of that. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I, you know, first and foremost, before we continue, let me salute you on that because that's Appreciate real important, that, my guy. That, you know, what I mean, I want it's important for the rest of the world to see that we're not one dimensional. Facts. So let me salute you on that. Um, let's talk about outside of music, getting to know fame a little bit, a little, a yeah, little bit talk more. To me. Um, what's your interest outside? Like, what do you do outside of music? What keeps you sane? Because music sometimes can become a grind. You need to step away and clear your head. What do you do when it's time to just enjoy life a little bit? Yeah, I think one big thing for me to, like, kind of, like, that restart button yeah. is traveling. Like, right. it, it doesn't even have to be out of the country. Like, just going for, like, long drives with the homie. Like, if I'm in Toronto and right. I'm taking a ride to Montreal. Right. The conversations we have, I appreciate. And just, like, little things like that, it goes such a long way. So, I would say definitely traveling. Right. Um, I'm into fashion and um, video games here and there and stuff. So, yeah, I just have fun with it. Dope, dope, dope. You know, um, you've collabed with a, you know, a gang load of artists already. You recently have a, a, a feature with, with Havaya Mighty. Yeah, shout out to the um, queen. Yeah, you know, she's doing her thing. Is there any up-and-coming artists in Toronto you'd like to collab with? Or uh, maybe even on the world stage? What are, what are, what, what's some of the collabs that you're looking forward to getting in now? Yeah. And maybe... A little forward, a little long, a little down the road in your career. There's uh, two artists that I've been really like taking in um, in the Toronto scene uh-huh. as of recently. Is uh, one of them is the, the Crook. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I yeah, think yeah. His, his bars is crazy and it's this, crazy. Like, the approach and you know yeah, I, mean? yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. fire. And then um, I'm really rocking with like Northside Benji. Right. Yeah. Like just him like being in UK and just you could tell he's in a, a good space. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. Uh, I'm messing with the new project and whatnot. So. Um. You know, we live once upon a time, maybe not anymore. Uh, we live in a place called the Screwface Capital. Yeah. Where, um, and this kind of relates to a question we, we had a little while ago, where people don't tend to work together mm-hmm. um, a lot, and there's a lot of politics. Um, how important is it to you um, to unite the city? How, how important is unity to you, and how do you feel you portray that in your music? Um, I'll take it, like, even outside of just my music. I've done it, like, for shows. Like, when I have my shows, I always have different upcoming artists in the city, like, pop out and open up and just try to give them that platform that they might not have, you know what I right. mean? Right. So I think it's very important um, to unite, and it's, it's only going to make us stronger. Uh, when I go to Atlanta, like, the way that we tap in and, and they're so welcoming and you could be in this, that, in the studio and Young Thug could be there. And right. 
Gunner could be over there, like right. stuff like that. It's it's real, you know. And um, I think bringing that home, that same aspect, and I I, I know a lot of people talk about it, um, but it's all about like action, you know. What I mean, like do what you're actually talking about. Right. And, um, I try my best to showcase that. Right. Um, and it's only gonna expand as time goes on. Now you spoke about uh your performances and whatnot. What's what's your your favorite performance to date? What's that one special moment that stands out to you? That's tough. I don't know if you've seen, but I actually did um, my first festival this year, Manifesto. Yeah. Um, that one was really dope. But if I had to like really tell you my favorite concert that I did, it would have to be like the Phoenix. Right. Yeah, the Phoenix yeah. was the one for me. For me, I, I, that was the first introduction as far as stage show goes yeah. to fame. And I, I, I remember you bringing out a lot of guests on that show. And yeah. it seemed like the fans were really in tune to what you were doing. What made that show so special? I think just like the approach and the way that um, we marketed it and um, the rollout. And you sold it out, by the way, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But not only did we sell it out, like me which, and- by the way, is a. I think I told you when you when you when you sold it out, it's a big feat for an independent artist out of the city to sell out a venue like that. So let me congratulate you on it. Appreciate that again, bro. I'm not even gonna lie to you though. Like talking to like the owners and stuff, they said like something like that hasn't really been done before. Right. So to have you know, accomplish that was huge. And it was like, man, like, it doesn't matter about no politics or what blogs are posting what. It's about the groundwork and right. the influence you have on the people and how you connect with them. When you say groundwork, uh, from the outside looking in, one thing I, I noticed that you did for that concert, which was hella dope, is you were actually dropping off tickets in person. Yeah, yeah. So with I, your fans. I was going to bring that up. Like, what made that experience so different, because i never done that before, right. um, was we actually dropped off, like, 90% of the tickets right. to people we engage. Every day I was in a different city, like, yo, shout out to my fans. They just bought some tickets, like, and I actually shouted them out and stuff. Right. And I think that just engaging, like, for real, was, was really dope. And I was just very grateful to not have come across any, like, toxic or negative people. Right. Because, th- honestly, in that situation, it could have been easy to set me up or whatever because I was just selling tickets to people that Yeah, but I you don't give that vibe off. I don't, but... I, like, you God, know, there's there's some people <laughs> out there that you can could, you could, you could feel negative energy around. Yeah. And um, one thing, and anytime your name comes up in a conversation, you have you have a very positive aura around you. you have, it just seems that you just you just ooze that positive vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you stay in that mindset? <sighs> That's a good question. Yeah. Man. How do I stay in that mindset? I think it just goes back to, like, understanding where I came from right? and understanding the outcome of what my life could be if I don't chase my dreams. Right. And I'm not content with that. So it's like I really make it, like, a priority to, like, go hard. You know what I mean? Right. Um, Because there's people out there that look up to me and they tell me, like, yo, you inspired me. Like, that record you put out, I'm going through that situation right now. And messages like that, like... That's like gives me superpowers, you know. Right. I feel like I'm Superman at that point. Right, and you're not afraid to take it there in your music either. Not at all. Right, and we, all. we don't get a lot of that in this day and age. So mm-hmm. another salute to you for that one. Talk to me about what you feel um, your biggest accomplishment has been this far in your career. Like up to this point, what are you most proud of? Uh, right now, I would say it actually happened this year. So I'm actually from Mississauga. Uh, that's the hometown. That's what I represent. Shout out Saga City. Yeah, OSOT. Shout out to all the homies out there. Um, but I think one of the biggest accomplishments for me this year, um, and, and in general, is getting recognized from the city. Right. I'm um, actually won an award. Um, so right. Mississauga has like their yeah, own yeah. award show. Yeah. Um, and I got like um, best record and music video of the year. So I was like, man, like just to know that they're tapping in and they're they they're paying homage and they gave me that platform. I really appreciated it, you know. So right. shout out to Mississauga, man, for real. If you had to narrow it down to uh, one thing that people can take away from the uh, from the project Showtime, what would it be? I would say just, like, understanding, like, how versatile I really am. Right. You know, I don't put myself in a box. I could tap into different markets. I have fun with it, and it doesn't seem forced, um, and it sounds good, and it's quality music. Right. Um, you know, we, we talked about me being able to witness the beginning of this journey and where it's come now over the past three, four years from what I've witnessed. Yeah. Um, you know, as we wrap up the interview, talk to me about what advice you would give to somebody that was in your shoes. Mm-hmm. Four years ago, what advice would you give to Fame Holiday yeah. in 2017, 18? What would you tell a young Fame Holiday about what the journey is about and what needs to be done to get where you're at? Did you tell him? Yeah, I mean, regarding myself, I feel like I wouldn't even say anything, um, to be honest with you, just because I wouldn't want to throw myself off right. or get too comfortable. 
Right. I feel like a lot of the obstacles I went through were, were needed. You know, I'm a religious person. I believe in God, and I feel like God doesn't put you things that you can't handle. Or, you know, he's teaching you things along the journey. So I think I needed that to get to where I am today. But if I was to talk to somebody else, um, I would say definitely, like, study the game. Understand what you're getting yourself into. Um, don't be afraid to invest in yourself. You're going to have to. Like, money talks, you know what I mean? Um, and if you're from Toronto, you know, if any artist that's listening to this younger than 25 and you're from Toronto, I would say search up the Remix Project. Yeah, that's where we are right now. We're literally right. in, the, in the Remix Project right now. And um, just the culture and, like, what they provide for you, like the services in terms of, not even services because, like, that they would be charging you. It's free. Right, 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 right. Um, but what they provide, like studio time, um, understanding, like, the, the industry, um, and you're not doing it by yourself, you know. I feel right. You, got you get to networking with other creatives, and this is not something that is, is all over the world. It's not. This is very unique to Toronto, and I believe there's a remix project in Chicago as well. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is something special that that's happened. A lot of a lot of dope artists have come out of the remix project. Hundred percent. So let's talk about that for a second. What what has the remix project given to you? What have you walked away with from? being part of this of this of the remix project yeah so uh funny enough i'm actually in it right now as we speak okay um i think we're, we're about to wrap up at the end of december mm -hmm. um but i've learned so much about the industry um how to handle certain situations when um you got to be professional and some someone's unprofessional with you um recording just tapping in with different sounds as well um networking of course i met a lot of great people i met my dj here um you know certain managers and a and r's I'm, I'm trying to tap in with um it's just a crazy community, and it's like everyone you would want to work with, and who's the, going to be the future mm -hmm. for the next like ten years in Toronto minimum. Um, they're all here right now, so right. it's just great to like be able to shake hands and actually work with certain creatives, you know. Right. So what's next? You know the uh, the project is out. Yeah. Um, we're 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 coming out of restrictions <clears throat> and lockdowns. What's on the horizon for Fame Holiday? Uh, so this is actually the first time I'm announcing it. Um, we didn't put the dates out yet, but I'm actually about to go on my. First Canadian tour. Nice. Wilson. Yes, sir. Congratulations. I had to Grateful. be the Nori, the Nori drink champs. Uh, <laughs> clap for you. Come on, come on. So talk to me. What's the tour going to look like? Uh, so we're trying to go to, well, we're going to, we're going to do Toronto, obviously. Right. We're looking to do Montreal, Ottawa. Um, and right now we're just like doing the back end stuff, trying okay. to tap into Vancouver. Right. So we're looking at a national tour. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And after that, I'm trying to go to the UK, so. Right. For sure. Anything else? Like, what else, uh, you know, as far as the music goes? Any collabs we can look forward to that's in the pipeline? Talk to me. Give me a little nugget that, that you know, yeah, give yeah. me a little something. Man. I mean, like, to be honest, like, this project, I'm super excited about it. I'm happy it's out. But certain records I've been sitting on for a while. So in that process, I've been working on so much music. And um, I'm ready. Like, as long as the fans are ready, like, I got a lot of a lot of new heat coming. Right. Um Definitely some, some cool features on the way, for okay, sure. Okay, we'll be looking forward to it, man. Uh, anything you want to tell your fans before we sign off? Uh, yeah, Team Fame, man. I really appreciate you guys for tapping in. Shout out to the homie Ricochet for pulling up. This is an OG. If you guys do not this know. This doesn't stop it. This is an OG. <laughs> and I know him from like way you. back. So just to, you. just to have you see the, the journey, man, I appreciate the support. I'm, like, I'm, I'm glad to be able to witness the journey, bro. I got to tell you, you actually played like my first record like on the radio. I remember that. I've been on like college stations and right. stuff shout out to you guys that's dope right. but to really take it to a different level right i appreciate that you know uh before we get out of here you know what every artist tells me they say you know never mind the the, the streams the videos the concerts it's always when um their song gets played on like commercial radio in their city and their folks and their parents hear the song on the radio yep where it really hits home well let me tell you something actually um the, that night you played it, you played Saucy. Right, yes. Um, so I was w with my mom in the car, and I knew it was going to come on because you had told me. Right. Um, but I didn't say much. I was just chilling with her in the car. I turned on the station, and I got to experience that moment with her for the first right. time ever. So shout out to my mom, and you know, I'm grateful for that. She was super happy. Shout screaming in the car. Fan. Screaming in the car. is trying to record me. I'm like, Mom, I'm trying to record it. I got to get the <laughs> audio right, you know? But just to hear that excitement, it was a blessing, man. I appreciate that for real. I love hearing stories like that. Fame, my brother. Again, thank you for uh, sitting down, chopping it up. Absolutely. The album. We're calling it the album. Let's go. Showtime. Showtime. Make sure you guys go run it up. It's on all streaming platforms right now. This is the guy y'all need to be tapped in with. Fame Holiday. Thank you again, my brother. Appreciate you, bro. Me and you, not the same. I'm moving different. I'm in my own lane. Being the greatest is part of the game. You think it's a joke, but I'm really not playing. I'm out of no competition with you niggas. I'm out of no competition with you niggas. I'm out of no competition with you